All right, I'm gonna just say it. I'm gonna save you guys five years on your life right now with this one lesson. I've been in crypto over five years. And for me, this is the biggest lesson I've learned. Don't get chopped up. When you get chopped up, several things happen. One is you begin to doubt yourself. If you get chopped up, you get out of, out of a position, you don't have confidence, you can't make any more decisions. Two, you don't think for yourself anymore. You feel like you aren't competent enough and you feel like you can't do anything and you have to take advice and tickers and information from other people. I'm gonna be straight up with you. All these influencers are out here, like me included, we're just retail. We're retail that is learning and speaking in public. That's it. You're no different than us. You aren't any worse than us. You aren't any better than us. We're retail. All of us are retail out here and don't think any different. And when you see an influencer saying, oh, you should listen to me because I know everything. No, the difference between an influencer and retail is that an influencer has a huge following and anytime they say something, someone can just buy their bags and they have that backstop of the bigger they are, the more mistakes they can make because their followers are basically exit liquidity. The third thing you get when you get chopped up is giving up. You don't want to give up. You are in an industry where <laughs> you can make many mistakes. You can lose a lot of money, consider it the cost of tuition, but you have the ability to make it all back in one trade. Do I recommend that? No, not at all. But the point I'm trying to make is you can lose a lot of money because you are in an industry that is growing at a rapid pace. It allows for many mistakes. Whereas with something else, if you're into a already saturated industry, there's no room for error. Whereas in crypto, it's the fastest moving horse right now. And there is a ton of room for error. And it's because it has to do with the upside and the markets. That's also kind of why I have the thesis I have on meme coins. It allows you to make mistakes, but you have some meme coins, like one or two of them, they will pay for all the losers. But I don't want to get into that in this video. This video is mainly going to be short and focused on not getting chopped up. I want to show you guys a couple of things in the market right now. And I'm just like literally a week ago in the last video we were making, it was in a state of, hey, we're at like a 56, 55K level. There's a lot of uncertainty. It was peak fear. And looking back, I even stated in the video, I was like, hey, I'm looking to uh, dabble into some of the meme coins. I'm holding the positions here. This is how I'm playing it personally. And the reason I was doing that is because I felt like, man, we're probably going to take another leg down. I try to do the opposite of my emotions. And that's why I'm making these videos is so that I can go back and that we can go back if you guys want to look at them. I'm actually doing this for myself a year, two years, three years from now into next cycle, I can come back and take a look and be like, oh, this is where we are at in this market. This is how I was feeling. This is how I feel now. This is where the market is now. All these match up. Okay, so this is probably going to play out similar to like it did last cycle. And that's mainly why I'm making these videos. And it also helps to document and understand what's going on. But last week we were around 56, 57 K and we were getting good news, but nothing was happening. And usually when something like that happens, that does create a lot of uncertainty and it creates a lot of doubt. And we started seeing a lot of influencers that were going short and they were shorting the market and they were publicly shorting and they were saying it's going to zero or we're going to 44 K. And I remember last cycle, I made that mistake. I was the guy who opened shorts. I remember I got roasted. This cycle, I did not open those shorts. In fact, I held the bags and I did open some longs. <laughs> some of them got absolutely roasted. And I remember why I don't use leverage. And note to self, Drake, if you're watching this video two, three years from now, when you get that temptation to do leverage, don't do it because you will get absolutely roasted. If you want to use a form of leverage, use like four or five X and that's after a giga nuke. Like I'm talking a giga nuke, like 
we wicked down to 52, 51K, and we were just at 65K, and 50K is like super strong support. At that point in time, there usually is a relief rally. So, Drake, three years from now, when there is a giga dip, there is usually that relief rally. So, you can use leverage then. Just make sure you sell it on that relief rally up. At least get back the amount that you invest in it, and then you can let a moon bag run. Also, Drake, remember, <laughs> you got liquidated when you tried to do 20x leverage. It was a small little move, and you got roasted. If you would have held it today, you would be sitting pretty. It was actually on Mog. Um, so we'll see if Mog is there in the future. Now, Drake, I also want you to notice this in the future. Uh, this is one of your theses for uh, opening a long, and this was around 57, 56K. This was the last week. This is why you thought it was okay to open it long. You probably shouldn't have used so much leverage, but this is the liquidation map. You can see the liquidations were heavily skewed to the short side. So there was a lot of people on this side that were skewed up in shorting the market. That would be the thing that would fuel the rally. And that's why our liquidation map looks like this today is we had a nice rally up and then we had a huge wash on the shorts and now it's kind of skewed towards the long side we have a little bit too much longs so either we wick back down and wash out all these guys retest around 61 maybe 60k it's probably going to be around 61k to equalize this or we end up having the short squeeze fueling into the shorts looking to a buy back in this is one of the posts. This was actually an Anson Schizocast. This is like a little Telegram account that he has. Notice how he makes a comment of going to take a break before deciding how much to buy. He actually had a bunch of other thoughts above it. Too long for the screenshot. But he basically the TLDR what happened is he opened up a long his short liquidation or he opened up a short. His short liquidation was 64K on Bitcoin. He got liquidated. And he usually when something like this happens, it's again, like I said, influencers are just retail thinking and speaking in public. He's retail. So a lot of other retail also got massively liquidated. This is not just me saying it. I'm just looking at the liquidation maps and you can see here massive liquidations, lots of money lost. When something like that happens, people want to make it all back in one trade. And sometimes they want to buy back into the market and well <laughs> make it all back in one trade so right now what we're looking for is holding above this 65k level i think if we can hold this level and into perspective whatever that level is in the future when you're watching this video again if you see it holding at a certain support level and you are in summer and you see this liquidation map We'll play another video for you next week to see how it goes. What I'm thinking today, I'm thinking is if we hold this 65K level and we go into, well, summer's about over, it's July 16th. And if we go into a full on bull with the ETH ETF coming out next week, I think is a strong catalyst. This will create the buy pressure to uh, fuel the market from a short squeeze, which is happening and slash happened the people who got liquidated to buy back higher. And then you have the fuel of the ETH ETF pushing it even further. And then when you have a lot of buy pressure and this reflexive price action, this attracts more users to come in. So currently right now we do not have retail in the markets, but as soon as retail comes in, that will also fuel the rally further. And also adding to that, uh, BlackRock, the Bitcoin ETFs, they haven't even started advertising to their boomers. And last week, also adding to that, we have over a billion dollars in uh, inflows on Bitcoin uh, ETF. So to summarize the bullish catalyst that we have so far is Trump surviving. That's obviously the biggest catalyst. It's kind of like the white swan, if there's such a thing, or white goose. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, Germany is done selling their Bitcoin. BlackRock and Larry Fink is open and public like, hey, look, we're going to bring like so much junk on chain. Uh, we got to have the ETH ETF coming next week. There's a lot of bullish catalysts coming for this. Uh, the only thing that I see as a black swan has to do with the Mt. Gox token. Uh, if that is sent out, 
which last night we kind of had a, a small wick down to it was like a four percent move in Bitcoin. It's because Mt. Gox was moving some funds. We fully re not retraced, but we we had a relief rally from it. But I think Mt. Gox is uh, the main black swan. So whatever you're seeing in the future, there probably is going to be some other black swans for the next cycle. But just keep it on the radar. Again, always keep that long-term biased <laughs> bull approach. <laughs> that's that's kind of what you had the past five years and what you still have now. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next one. If you guys want to join the Discord, link is in the description below. Today was ticker day for the Discord with the relief rally seeing what's strong. First Peter chapter 2, verses 21. I actually like this one. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leading you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit with, was found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Be more like Jesus. Peace out, guys.